Uh, hi everyone, uh, welcome uh, to Egypt, Spain, IT Innovation Projects webinar. Uh, in 2016, uh, Egypt and Spain uh, started this project uh, through uh, two governmental agencies, CDTI from Spain and the ETIDA from Egypt. The objective of this project is to foster uh, collaboration between Spanish and Egyptian companies in the field of ICT research and development. For the last six years, we had six calls. This is the, the seventh one. Uh, in this webinar, uh, CDTI and the ET, the uh, members will explain the opportunities for collaboration between Egypt and Spain, eligibility criteria and submission process, evaluation criteria. Uh, this is the first webinar in a series of webinars that we plan to conduct during this call. It is expected that ETIDA and CTI will conduct a second webinar. Uh, it will be a matchmaking one. Companies will give a small presentation aiming to finding the match with counterpart. Um, Uh, if you have any questions, please post your questions in this QA panel and CDTI and the ETIDA delegates will answer uh, then, them at the end of this webinar. Kindly note uh, that presentation will be posted on the event's website and you will receive an email uh, uh, when they are available. By this, I will give the floor to my colleague, Mr. Jose Manuel from CDTI, um, uh, delegate for MENA region, who will explain the opportunities uh, for the collaborations between Egypt and Spain. Take it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amer. Good morning, everyone from, from Egypt and, and Spain. Right now in my presentation, I would like to highlight why you should participate in this bilateral r and call, uh, highlighting some of the most important strengths and synergies with the, between both countries. So, okay, as, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, as Amer said, uh, this is uh, the seventh call. Uh, so we have already a pathway collaborating together, but. Sometimes it is necessary to highlight why it is important for both countries to collaborate in this IT R&D partnership. First of all, uh, I would like to give some strengths of Egypt for those Spanish companies joining us today. This, uh, the, the economy in Egypt is going very well. The GDP has been increased even during the pandemic, COVID-19, 3.3%, uh, and it's expected it's going to increase this year 5.2%. One important thing to highlight is Egypt is a bridge with Africa Middle East, according to its location and the partnerships they have with Africa, European and uh, countries from Asia, Middle East, namely, they, they, this is a good uh, partner to, call, to work in, this, in these countries. It has a high population. In fact, this is the third most populated African country with a very young, very young people. Uh, so this is helpful to deploy new technologies. Uh, as we are going to see later on, they have a huge amount of people uh, using internet. They are right now in this strategy of the country. They are developing some mega projects in energy, infrastructure, agriculture, and tourism. In this mega project, for sure, they, maybe in Spain, we have heard about the new capital so in this project, we, IT will be necessary, of course. This is a, an important, an important figure to highlight. Uh, during the last decade, it was the first African country receiving foreign di direct investment destination. We will see the figures later on. And 80% of the working population speaks English or other uh, European languages. In fact, some of them speak Spanish because uh, Cervantes is in, in Cairo, in Goki. Let's see some figures here of the African Development Bank 2021 report. As I, I said before, uh, it was the top 
African countries receiving uh, foreign direct investment, and the second one in number of population uh, using internet. Uh, right now, uh, this is a turn of, of Spain, which is the fourth economy of the European Union after Germany, France, and Italy, and the 14th in the world. Uh, we, has, we have a very good ecosystem to uh, set companies, uh, more than uh, 14,600 uh, foreign firms have set the, their business in Spain. This is a, a good figure to, to highlight how the, the Spanish ecosystem is prepared to receiving uh, companies from abroad. Uh, Spain, uh, obviously, is a gateway for the European Union, 5 million um, people, uh, consumers, um, specifically for the American markets, not only South America, or Central America, even North America, uh, due to the number of Spaniards, uh, people speaking Spanish in, in the USA. Um, some figures related to IT. Uh, Spain is the third country in the European Union in connectivity and seventh in digital uh, public uh, ecosystem with levels above the European average. I will, see, I will show you later on some, some charts uh, exposing this, this information. And the R&D investment coming from the ICT sector represents 70% of the R&D investment in the country. As you can see in the Digital Economy Society Index 2022, Spain was the seventh country in Europe above the, the average, and um, more developed than other countries like France, Germany, or Belgium, etc. Uh, only the, the some Scandinavian countries uh, were above Spain. And you can see there are some strengths in human capital, connectivity, etc regarding the European average. Right now, strategies. I, I want to highlight how we are sharing the uh, same strategies relating to our uh, in development in, uh, in IT. For instance, on the Spanish side, there is a strong commitment to digitalization. Several plans have been launched, like the Digital Spain Plan 2025, devoted to 5G, cyber security, big data, et cetera. The microchips and semiconductor parte using the next generation funds from the European Union, where there will be a public investment of more than 12,000 million euros between now and 2027. Um, as I said before, it's the country that will receive more funds from the European Union to develop these plans. On the Egyptian side, uh, as I said before, uh, uh, Egypt plays a key role in Africa. Um, ET itself has launched a very interesting plan, which is Egypt makes electronics, where <clears throat> ET want to deploy all the manufacturing and designing uh, ch uh, value chain in Egypt to become a regional uh, hub. Um, Egypt has a fantastic ecosystem, uh, a startup ecosystem. Uh, there are other countries in Africa that also have this this ecosystem in developed, but Egypt is one of the most developed one. Uh, other, other ideas regarding the, the ecosystem. Uh, in Spain, the ICT sector had turned over 120 billion euros in 2019, which is uh, close to 4% fourth fourth of the Spanish GDP. We have almost 70,000 companies that employs more than 500,000 workers. And this is a, a, a figure to, to highlight. We, are the, we have the largest household fiber network in the European Union. 92% 90, of, the, of the houses in Spain are covered by very high capacity network. Uh, this is the, the country with a more developed uh, network uh, in, in Europe. On their side, EG, uh, the ICT sector is, is going very well. It's the largest contributor to GDP growth. Uh, they are the, Egypt itself is an internet vacuum uh, according to the networks they have with the, all the countries around. And as I said before, the several, several continents, Africa, Asia, and Europe. Egypt is already a hub in the, in the region. There are uh, very well-known companies already based in Egypt. Um, most, uh, most other companies are, are setting right now is factories and is uh, um, engineering offices in Egypt. Um, 
this is a, a very a very important thing to highlight for the Spanish company. They had a very uh, very well skilled um, workforce, speaking several languages. Most of them they speak English. Regarding innovation, uh, we have several several comments. Although we are in several levels right now, according to the Global Index Innovation, all the figures that I'm going to show right now were, were extracted for the Global Innovation Index 2022 report. Spain was ranked 29th, while Egypt was ranked 89th. But we share, both of us, we share that we produce more innovation outputs relatively to the level of innovation investment. This means that Although sometimes there are few investments uh, related to innovation, the Spanish and Egyptian eco ecosystem share that they can produce very good products, outcomes, etc. Although despite this low investment, so this it, it talks very well of the productivity of the Spanish and Egyptian uh, ecosystems in Arabi, specific, especially. Uh, other figures. This is some figures related to Spain. Um, we are classified the high income group, uh, uh, where the more the most uh, the developed countries, and there we have uh, some uh, good punctuations, good scores in, in infrastructure, knowledge and technology outputs and creative outputs. As I said before, we have a good infrastructure, uh, and by, besides, we have a very uh, skilled people that can develop and can obtain very good innovative outputs. And regarding our European neighbors, we are above them in five pillars, institutions, human capital and research, infrastructure, market sophistication, and creative outputs. And on the right side of the, of the slide, you have the comparison with these, these countries. Um, you, because you will receive this presentation, you can look at it with more detail. On the efficient side, as I said before, they are in the lower middle income group uh, regarding uh, what it is playing in this, in this report. And they share the same, um, the same advantages that Spanish, Spain has, infrastructure, knowledge and technology outputs and creative outputs. So to wrap up my presentation, I would like to, to resume what is interesting for me uh, of this Spanish and Egyptian partnership. We have aligned strategies, specifically in IT. We are deploying the, the, the ecosystem in, in both countries. We have complementarity of markets. As I said before, Spain is the gateway to enter in, in America, same as Egypt can be the gateway to enter in Asia and Africa. Uh, we are sharing the main sector of interest to apply IT. Both countries are investing in infrastructure, in agriculture, in energy, specifically renewable energies. Uh, for instance, Egypt has signed several agreements with, with Mazda to deploy the green hydrogen plants there, the PV plants, CSP, and tourism, which is a, a, a key sector for both countries. Both countries have good IT infrastructures, as I said before. The people working in this country is very high skilled. This is something that sometimes in Spain is difficult because it's difficult to retain the, 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 the workers. So this is interesting for a Spanish company. And finally, we can um, outcome good innovation outputs uh, because of the productivity of both countries with that with minor investments uh, have a very successful successful outcomes. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I think that they will be answered in the Q&A uh, part. Thank you very much. I will, I will introduce right now to Cristina Gracia, which is the Spanish uh, manager of the SET program. Cristina, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Jose Manuel. Very interesting presentations. Okay, so my name is Cristina Gracia. I'm program manager for SET programs and other programs at CDTI. CDTI was created in 1977 and we act as the Spanish Innovation Agency. We are a public entity under the Ministry of Science and Innovation. 
And our main role is to enhance Spanish companies' competitiveness and internationalization. We try to enhance this competitiveness through the promotion, assessment, and funding of technology innovation close to market, meaning that we don't fund basic research in most of our instruments. The internationalization part is promoted through a foreign network acting in over 20 countries, and we will talk about it later. The support we can offer to the Spanish companies is based in the evaluation and funding of their research, development, and innovation activities. We provide reports towards the tax ex ex exception related to research, development, and innovation uh, investment done in Spain. We also support the creation and consolidation of new technology-based companies. And we foster technological knowledge sharing through the multilateral, bilateral, and uh, several international programs, such as uh, Horizon 2020. As I said, we have a foreign network uh, acting in more than 20 countries, and we have 10 offices. One of them is based in Brussels, and its main role is to increase the participation of Spain in the uh, European Framework Pro Program for Research and Development, and the other nine offices are in many different countries, like Jose Manuel, who is in Morocco, and he's acting in all the north of Africa and Middle East. And our role here is to try to open the doors for Spanish companies abroad, to look for opportunities in these countries for our Spanish uh, companies, and of course, to find uh, suitable partners, meaning agencies like CDTI in these countries, with which we can establish bilateral programs to fund bilateral R&D projects between Spanish and other countries' entities. Thanks to this um, action of these delegates in different countries, we have an international calls plan every year. In 2022, we had more than 20 open international calls. And out of them, I think 10 were bilateral, like the one we are going to talk about today. Today, we are going to talk about ECTIP, which is the Egyptian Spanish Innovation Program in ICT. It is a call for proposals aiming to launch ambitious and joint R&D projects of a high international standard between Egyptian and Spanish organizations. These projects would be funded by ITIDA in Egypt and by CDTI in Spain. SET projects must be industry-driven and market-oriented. This means that we won't fund very basic research and that you need to have in mind the market. You need to answer a need of the market. But we are going to fund, as we will see later on and in the text of the code, we are going to fund very specific um, stages of the development. This would be uh, technology readiness levels uh, between three and seven. In this concrete uh, call, we will fund projects in all areas of information technology and its applications. And all this means that we are looking for a development or substantial improvement of projects and, or services. Regarding international cooperation, we will need institutions from Spain and from Egypt. The minimum consortium must be composed by one Egyptian company, one Egyptian research group, and one Spanish private company. This year, we have uh, something new, which is that the consortia without academic partners are allowed only in P PDP level, which will be explained later on, as long as they have a strong R&D team. It's important to remember that all the partners must participate in R&D activities. This means that we won't accept commercial agreements. We want both the Spanish and, and Egyptian groups to participate in the R&D activities. And finally, in order to, to consider it an international cooperation, we need a balance between the participation of each country. So the uh, maximum budget, budget per country would be the 70% of the full or the global budget of the project. 
If you don't have this consortium, these three or two members, you can uh, ask for our support to help you find a partner. In this sense, we have prepared uh, a template for a partner search in which you will have to describe your own uh, institution, the institution you're looking for, and the project you would like to accomplish or your activities and ideas of projects. You will send it to, you ask for the template to us in these emails, or you find it together with the text of the call, and you will send it to us completely fulfilled, and we will distribute it among possible uh, partners who will contact you and start conversations to try to, to build a consortium and a project. As I said, all information technology areas are covered in this call. We can see here the definition of some strategic areas or technology trend areas, but any of them would be allowed and all the applications possible. The timetable for this seventh round would be uh, November to March, from November 7th to March 20th, although at least at CDTI website, you, you can find the text of the call already published. And I think at ETIDA website, you will also find uh, the call. If you don't find it, just contact us and we will send it to you. I think it's important when you plan to prepare a proposal and to submit a proposal to a new call to have a view of the success rate. In six rounds, we have received 21 proposals and we have funded uh, five projects or five projects have been selected to be co-funded. This means that we have an accumulated success rate, rate of 29%, which I think is quite good. For the submission of the application, you will only use the CDTI electronic headquarters. This means that you will work together in the preparation of the application, both the Egyptian side and the Spanish side, and the Spanish company will submit all the documentation through our electronic headquarters. The documentation you need to submit is a joint application form. You will find a template, a consortium agreement between the members participating in the, in the project, and you, we, we have prepared a uh, not a template, but a guide on the content that this agreement must have. But of course, you can change it. It's a private uh, agreement between you, the members of the consortium. And then there are several documents that each part of the consortium uh, will have to submit. But remember that it will be only the Spanish company, the one to submit it or upload it in the CDTI electronic headquarters. It is quite easy to find it it's if you Google CDTI CED Electronica CDT. And the only thing is that the Spanish company need to have a user in the electronic headquarters. If you don't have it, I suggest to register as soon as possible because the user must be validated by the personnel at CDTI. And then it's always good to get familiar with the application and to know what kind of information you have to upload and all that. So, Please do it soon enough. Finally, after the submission, we will take about 10 days to review all the documentation, maybe ask you to send additional or complete information, and we will determine whether the proposal meets the international requirements or not. If not, then the proposal will be rejected, rejected. And if it does, we will start the evaluation, independent technical evaluation done by ITIDA in Egypt and by CDTI in Spain. But here there is an important thing. ITIDA will evaluate the documents that you have already uh, sent. But in Spain, due to legislati legislation, we need to have an application, a funding application in Spanish. So from the moment that you are declared eligible, we will give 20 natural days to the Spanish company to submit a national funding application. Once you have sent this information, the technical evaluation in, in Spain will also start. When both of us have our evaluations at CDTI and at ITIDA, 
We will share them and we will come to a mutual understanding. And only those projects with favorable evaluations in both countries will opt for funding and international um, Finally, I would like to talk about the financial support for Spanish partners. Here at CDTI, we can offer a partially reimbursable aid. This means that there is a part of the financial aid that uh, would work as a grant because the company, if the project is success, successful and you accomplish your activities, a part of it won't need to be reimbursed. But there is another part that the company have to reimburse in a 10 to 15 period of time, three years after the, the, the projects. Of course, there is another part of a uh, kind of grant that is the tax exempt exception that the CDTI will prepare. In this case, you don't need to go to specialized companies to prepare these documents and then the ministry to validate it. CDTI will prepare it for you. And Finally, I have to tell that the financial aid from CDTI will only cover the 85% at most of the Spanish uh, budget in the project. If you want more details about the financial tool, you have to follow the link at the lower part of this slide. And some details about the Spanish budgets and project. Remember that the consortium must include a Spanish company. Of course, uh, universities, research centers, technology centers, they are more than welcome to participate, but they have to participate self-funded or subcontracted by the Spanish company, which is an eligible cost together with other collaborations, amortizations, materials, and te technical personnel. Remember also that CDTI will only fund R&D activities between TRL levels uh, between four and seven, and the minimum budget for these activities must be 175,000 euros. There is no upper limit, but remember that you need a full balance of the project of at least uh, 70%. So it will be determined uh, here, maybe you can find uh, a limit. We have talked about uh, the requirement. I would like to show you now the main reasons for rejections, with, which, I, which are, of course, not meeting the requirements, like having all the partners or having a, or complying with a minimum budget. It's also important for CDTI to remember that you are receiving a loan. So your financial capacity will be measured. And if it's very low, if your company is too young and you haven't had income in the last years, you will probably be rejected because you, you don't have the sufficient financial capacity to accept a loan. And on the ITIDA side and also on CDTI, it's important to have a proper technological challenge, meaning that every something that is just uh, very regular or very normal, not innovation, will not be funded. Here I have three examples of success, successful projects. Two of them has already start, uh, finished this year. The first, no, the first and the third one. You can see that the consortium has the three minimum partners, the Spanish company the first, then like Ceresco, the second is the Egyptian company, and finally the Egyptian academic uh, group. Cairo University and the American University of Cairo are the ones participating in these projects, but other can participate. And remember that there is some kind of projects this year that, that can be successful with the, without the participation of an academic partner. As you can see, the areas of these projects are quite different. Agritech sector, health, and energy. So as I said many times, any application of ICT could be successful in this project, in this scope. 
And this was all I wanted to share with you. Of course, we are open to questions, but at the end of, of the session, please, you can write your questions under Q&A panel. And now I give the floor back to Dr. Amr Sawat from ITIDA. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Christina. Uh, I'm gonna share my presentation. Um, actually, this is uh, just some sort of, uh, uh, not guideline, but uh, best practice in proposal writing. Uh, my presentation has two parts. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce the ITEC program, uh, and then the call uh, ESITIP. Uh, for the ETIDA, uh, as some of you may know, ETIDA is a governmental agency. It stands for Information Technology Industry Development Agency. It was established in 2004, law number 15. And one of the main objectives uh, for ETIDA is supporting the research and studies in the uh, information technology sector and encouraging benefiting from uh, their studies. Uh, the structures of uh, ETIDA and ITEC. Uh, ITEC is a program in ETIDA that supports innovation. Uh, it reports to the ETIDA VP for innovation. Uh, in, it, in ITEC, we have a steering committee. The steering committee consists of experts from academia and experts from the industry. It is important to describe the steering committee because they are the final decision making in the process of the uh, evaluation of the proposal. Uh, actually, also we have two uh, uh, units in ITE, uh, the projects units and the operation units. These are the people who will manage the proposal during the submission and after the acceptance. Um, the ITEC program in Egypt uh, actually participate in the ecosystem in the innovation ecosystem. Uh, we have different functions. Uh, we support the finance and the culture and the human capital. Uh, for the human capital, uh, we are a part from the DAB project. DAB stands for Digital East Builder Initiatives. Also, we support uh, students in the fourth year uh, in engineering sector. And also, we uh, help uh, in the, uh, promoting the culture of collaborations between industry and academia. Uh, but the main reason of our meeting today is the third part, which is the finance. Uh, we have a program called Collaborative Funded Projects, in which we fund the projects uh, up to 5 million Egyptian pounds in Egypt makes electronics. And actually we have, and this called basically, this is the international collaboration with Spain. The fund is up to 2.5 million Egyptian pounds. Uh, we have a calendar, and our calendar is fixed. And basically, we, uh, uh, we have uh, during the month of Jan and Feb, it is the call for graduation project. And then during March and April, the call for the national uh, call, uh, collaborative funded project. And in September and October, another national call. As uh, a Spain call uh, is during uh, November, uh, up till March. If we just briefly describe the activities of the ITEC, in the collaborative funded projects, we have funded more than 200 projects, exactly 222 projects. Uh, the benefits, uh, they benefit more than 24 universities and more than 100 companies. In the graduation projects, we have supported more than 1,300 projects. And for the Digital East Builders uh, initiatives, we have supported more than 360 students with 3 million uh, US uh, dollars uh, and in four universities. Uh, the main success stories from uh, the ITEC program, uh, some like Cyware, uh, this is an Egyptian company that has its own product uh, spectrometer and optical spectrometer product uh, that is now sold in the US. 
We have a MEMS division. This is another electronic company. Avid Gene, it is the third company doing AI research in video analytics. Uh, RDI, this is another company uh, conducting research in the field of optical character recognition and speech recognition and uh, NLP, uh, also the Lini. Several from this company got funded from uh, iTech and they have a very positive uh, ROI. In terms of academic, uh, the projects funded by the iTech were able to deliver till uh, 2021 uh, more uh, 97 journal papers, uh, 217 conference papers, and 21 granted patent in the US. The cumulative, the cumulative, sorry, the cumulative uh, impact factor uh, exceeds 170 for the journal, and for the H5, the cumulative H5 index uh, approaches 2000. For the Egypt Spain uh, in information technology innovation projects, actually the ITech program has three levels of funding. The first level, which goes from TRL2 to TRL3, this is the first one. Um, uh, this is called PRP, and this is for academics only, and this is, does not belong to the Egypt Spain core. Is being called cover two funding schemes. The first one called ARP, Advanced Research Projects. The starting point in this case is a proof of concept, which is basically either paper or patent or solid data. Uh, in this case, the applicants consist of a university academic partner and a company. The funding it is 1.5 million Egyptian pound. And if the project is in electronics, so we have an extra fund equal to 250K. The deliverable of this funding scheme, the ARP is a prototype. Then we have the third fund, funding scheme, which is included in this call as well. It is called PDP. The starting point is a prototype, and the deliverable is a product, TRL7, that's to say an industrial prototype, or an IP product. In this case, the fund is 2.5 million Egyptian pound, and it can increase with an extra 250K if electronics is considered. In this call, we allow company to apply by their own. No need to have an academic partner if the company has a strong R&D. And when we say strong R&D, it means that we have a team that has a good publication list and or patterns. The proposal evaluation start at has three different phases. After the submission, which will close in March 20, we're gonna do some sort of initial check, initial screening in which we're gonna check the documents and also the start and the end point of the proposal. Then, through the steering committee, we're gonna assign two to three independent reviewers to the proposal. It is expected that the review process will take up to six weeks. If the reviewer decide the acceptance of the proposal, then the proposal will be presented in front of the steering committee who will give the final decision of the, of the proposal. If the proposal is accepted by the steering committee, then both parties, CDTI and the ETIDA, will sign the proposal. For the proposal contents, actually, we have the following. We start by the general information, and then we have the project outline, the participant data, the contribution to the project, 
and the expertise of the participant at the consortium agreement. In the next few slides, I'm gonna focus on the project outline and what are the questions sent to the reviewers and what are the expected answers. The project outline consists of a description which should be less than two pages. Then the innovation highlights in which the applicant describes the state of the art and what is the expectation from this innovation. Then the applicant will describe the technological development, then the market, then we're gonna go through the details of the project in terms of milestones, work breakdown structure, Gantt chart, timeline, and so on. To describe what is needed in the proposal, we, what we're gonna do is basically, we're gonna start with the end in mind. As we know, the proposal will be sent to two to three independent reviewers assigned by the steering committee. The proposal basically will be evaluated against five criteria. First, the eligibility criteria, then crucial criteria, and basic assessment, IT technology and innovation, then the market and competition. On the left-hand side, these are the questions sent to the reviewer. On the right-hand side is the proposal and the content of the proposal. In the next few slides, I'm gonna describe the questions and the expected answer and where this answer should be in the proposal. The first set of questions sent to the reviewer called eligibility criteria. Basically, we ask the reviewer to ass assess the project is a civilian, has a civilian purpose or not. It is directed to product, process or service. And there is a cooperation uh, between the two parties. These questions should be answered in the general information part and the project outline. Then the crucial criteria, the financial capacity of partner and the formal agreement. The answer of these questions should be delivered in the project outline participant data and the consortium agreement. The third criteria is the basic assessment. In the basis, the basic assessment, the reviewer are, are, are asked to assess the partnership and the project structure. And when we speak about the partnership, it is expected to have a good collaboration between the different parties of the project the Spanish, the Egyptian, and the academic partner as well. So the reviewer should assess that there is a balanced partnership and there is an added value and the technological capacity. Moreover, in terms of the project, it is expected to describe the work breakdown of the proposal in terms of milestones, deliverables, cost, financial structure, and financial commitment. These questions should be answered in the project outline in the section related to the work breakdown structure and the contribution of the partners and similarly in the expertise of the applicants. The fourth criteria, it is a technology and innovation. Uh, and when we talk about technology and innovation, so basically we talk about technological maturity and technological achievement and the degree of innovation. In the proposal, there is a section in the project outline titled innovation and technology. 
the answer of these questions should be written in this section. Similarly, it is expected in the section of the expertise of the participant to emphasize on these questions. The fifth criteria, it is the market and competition. All products, all proposal in the Egyptian, in the Egypt, Spain, IT, IP are expected to reach the stage of product and to have a time to market. So the fifth criteria assess the market and the profitability and the competitive advantages. These two questions should be addressed in the market section of the project outline. Finally, when you are writing the proposal, it is expected that the proposal is well written, well organized, and follow the guidelines of technical writing. So basically all previous work should be cited. Statistics, should be clearly referenced and mentioned the source. Figures and pictures should be referred in, in the text. Figure captions should be proper and accurate. And no, the proposal is grammatically checked against mistakes. Also, excessively longer proposal uh, are not uh, expected we need a proposal that is well written, concise, and focused. It either requests a document, we call it a key success indicator, in which the applicant describes the expected outcome of this proposal in terms of papers and patents and sales. Previous proposal accepted by the applicant should be included in this uh, file as well. So previous proposal and the result of previous projects in terms of sales or paper or patents should be included in this file. Relevant papers or patents or sales related to the proposal should be included in this file as well. Stage two of the review ends by a decision, which is one of three, either accept the proposal or reject the proposal or major revision. If it is major revision, the proposal is sent to the applicant to revise the proposal and resubmit within 10 days. The proposal is then sent to the reviewer to assess it for the second time. At the last decision by the reviewer is to accept the proposal or reject the proposal. If the proposal is accepted, it will be presented in front of the steering committee. In the presentation, it is expected that the applicant will, will introduce himself and the project team and the industrial partner and the previous experience. Also, the applicant will explain the objective of the proposal and the relevance to the ICT industry. And from the technical point, the applicant should explain and describe the existing solutions, the proposed solution and the advantage of the proposed solutions. Also, the applicant should describe the market and, and this briefly describe the uh, market survey and the market positioning of the proposed solution. Describe the budget and the execution of the project. The duration of the presentation is 25 minutes and it is expected that every point has its evidence. The steering committee will decide if the proposal will be accepted or not. If the proposal is accepted from the Egyptian side, then we're gonna communicate with the Spanish side, CDTI, and check 
the decision, the condition of the proposal as their such. If the proposal is accepted independently from both sides, CDTI and ETIDA, we will sign the contract with the applicant. This round will start on November 7 and it will end on March 20. Uh, there is something new in this round, which is in the PDP, Egyptian company are allowed to apply without academic partner, as long as they have a good r and By this, I would like to wish you a good submission and good result, and I will give the floor back to Christine. Thank you. Hello, thank you. So now we open the time for questions. Please write them under the Q&A panel. And if we don't have time to answer all of them, we will uh, write the answers through email. I would like to tell you that the session has been recorded that we will publish it in our in the website of the event and that the presentations will also be available there and we will send an email to all the the people that registered for the event when all this documentation is ready also dr sabwat maybe you would like to talk about possible new um webinars that we plan to, to have. If you want to give yeah. that, okay, that information. Yes, uh, okay, Christina, uh, the idea is that uh, this, this webinar, the objective of this webinar is to introduce the call and to describe the eligibility and the uh, evaluation criteria for the proposal. Uh, and then uh, after we're gonna send the presentation to the applicant, uh, to the participant, we are planning to have a second webinar in which all the Egyptian or Spanish company will give a small presentation about their interest. And uh, based upon this presentation, we are expecting to have some sort of matchmaking between the Egyptian and the Spanish sites. Um, uh, maybe that we're gonna have this uh, second webinar uh, by the end of November, we're going to decide uh, later based upon your contribution and based upon the input of the participants. Okay, thank you, Christine. Okay, we have two questions. I will read one of them. Does this call include academic research and prototype or only for companies and PDP? I think maybe, Dr. Sabot, you can share the, the presentation again. There's the slide in which you explain from where to where is considered what kind of, of project. Okay. You see, I, I, as you can see here in the presentation, is it clear? I, I, I don't know. No, we lost it. Okay. We were watching it, but. Let's share it again. I think when you try to use the full screen mode, it removes. Yeah. So maybe you okay, can leave can, it like this. Yeah, we can leave it like this. You can, okay. because. As you can see here, actually, for the ARP, we have two partners from the Egyptian side. We have the academia and the company. And for, for the PDP, the second level, still, still, we have the collaboration between the academia and the company. But in this call, we allow company to apply alone as long as they have a good R&D team. So basically the condition didn't change. Academia and uh, industry apply together for ARP and PDP 
for PDP only, industry can apply by their own as long as they have a strong R&D team. Hopefully this is answer the question. Yes, I think it does. We have a few questions about the partner search. Uh, there is not a concrete tool. There is a template that we have prepared. It's in Word and you have to complete it with the information of your own group, the kind of group or company you are looking for and the kind of activity you are, you are accomplishing or the, pro the project you have in mind. Then if it comes from Egypt, you will send it to uh, ETIDA will send it to CDTI and CDTI will distribute it among Spanish companies and they will answer to this partner search. They will contact you. And the other way around, if a Spanish company prepares this partner search, they will send it to CDTI, CDTI to ETIDA and ETIDA will try to find a suitable partner in Egypt. Uh, this template for a partner search is published together with the text of the call. And if you don't find it, you just need to, to contact us and we will, we will uh, send it to you. Would you like to add anything else? Um, no, this is okay. Um, yeah. Actually, we, this is the objective of this presentation. Actually, inshallah, that we're going to have the second webinar. This will also help in doing the matchmaking, and everyone will be allowed just send us a brief description of your topics, and then you're going to have five minutes presentation in the second webinar. We're going to uh, give this presentation, and hopefully, among the attendees, we can you can find the uh, matching counterpart. We can actually we can do it before by sending this match making uh, template and then in the presentation it will be a very good opportunity for uh, people who have same interest to get together and build the consortium mm -hmm. um there's another question regarding the partner search they ask if it would be, would be possible to identify academic partners in spain in addition to companies of course, we send the information to different types of uh, entities in Spain because here uh, academic partners are more than welcome, as I said, but most of the pe people who will receive this information would be companies. But yes, some academics, academic partners will also be aware of your partner search. Okay, so I... Let me see, maybe there's- I some... think, yeah, we have more questions. You have more? Yeah, yeah. What are the conditions regarding the Spanish company? What is the limitation of the financial capacity? Okay, this is a quite difficult one. Um, as the Spanish company is receiving a loan, they have to have, um, they need in, uh, income in the last two years to justify that they can uh, reimburse the, the loan. But this financial evaluation is very specific and it's done at the end of the project, of the process of evaluation. So it's a bit difficult to give all the details, but more or less uh, startups which hasn't have um, income in the last two years will would not have enough uh, financial capacity. Uh, the recording of the meeting, I repeat, yes, it would be published in the website and you will receive an email once we have published the recording and the presentations in the website. Mm. And can an academic partner with a, with a project idea trigger a partner search process? Uh, I think they can from both sides, but remember that in Spain you will need uh, a Spanish company. In that that is the requirement to have a Spanish company. Yeah, and I think the same for the, for the Egyptian side, we need to have a consortium because the the uh, the company is a mandatory from the Egyptian side. Uh, for the ARP, we need to have an academic plus an industrial partner. For the PDP, we can have an industrial partner alone. So basically an academic partner, yes, can start or can trigger the partner search. They can send us 
a brief description of what they want like to uh, to conduct during the proposal and we're gonna do this partner search in the Egyptian um, community belonging to the industry industry Egyptian community uh, and and we will try to help them to get the industrial partner uh, suitable for their application okay there's another question regarding the availability for finance funding for the Spanish academic partner. Um, the Spanish academic partner can participate. They must participate self-funded, meaning that he, he will recover its own uh, costs, or it can be subcontracted by the Spanish company. And this cost is eligible for funding from CDTI, but of course, uh, they have to come to an agreement with a company which is the benefic beneficiary from the fin financial aid from CDTI. Wow, well, this is for you. Yes, what yes. is the way to get a PDP? Do we have to certify the prototype to show that we have a prototype or just include the details within the proposal will be enough? Yeah, no, the, yes, it's actually you need to include the details of the proposal uh, in the proposal. But let me emphasize here is that the prototype, we need to give a detailed description of the prototype because this is the, the starting point for the BDD. Moreover, uh, many reviewers, the Egyptian reviewer prefer to have some sort of a video, a link to a video to this uh, prototype. So uh, uh, it will be recommended that you add a link uh, in the proposal uh, to uh, a video that describe the details of the prototype and explain how it is performing um, and, and, and the a different function of this prototype. So full details should be given in the proposal for the prototype to be eligible to apply for a PDP. No need to have a certificate. Okay, I think we don't have more questions here. So just remember everybody that the uh, recording and the, and the presentation will be available and that we will send you a satisfaction survey and you can s send your comments there if you are willing to prepare a project, if you want to, if you want some support to find a partner, whatever you want to share with us will be more than welcome. So thank you everybody for connecting and see you in the next occasion. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.